since then. And really, the, the Little East tournament is the gateway to, you know, the big goals that you set back in the preseason. And so as you take a look at, at what may lay ahead, what are the things that you make sure your team can take care of on its home court to get a win today over a Rhode Island college team that you've handled twice? I, I just think we have to play within ourselves. Don't let the moment be too big. Um, you know, when we play our best basketballs, when we're playing loose, we're playing fast, um, we're playing our pace and our tempo, uh, we're pressuring on defense. Uh, it's when we get, we let other teams control the tempo and the pace is when we get in a little bit of trouble. So we've got to protect the, protect the basketball and, and control each possession. And that's something you have been able to do well for most of the season. And having Ashley Brown back at what appears to be full strength has been a big factor in that in these last couple of weeks for you in particular. She was hobbled a little bit over the middle portion of the season. Uh, l what difference does it make to have her playing the way she's capable of playing when you get on a stage like this? Ashley, you know, she's just a floor general. Even though she's not technically running the point guard, she does, again, um, she had, we had a nice article in the paper about her this past week. She just does things on the floor you need done to win basketball games, whether it's getting on the floor after loose balls, um, hitting clutch shots. Um, the moment's never too big for Ashley Brown. Um, sometimes I want her to be a little bit probably more uh, selfish than she is, but she's a, she defers. She knows where the stars are. She tries to get it to the carrier a lot. Um, she moves the ball well. Um, but it's really her defense and her grit that is so... Uh, uh, contagious to everybody else on the team and that is what you need to win ball games. And Jess Korzek is a unique case in the sense that she used to wear the other colors. You don't see a lot of that at this level, and but she did play at Rhode Island College earlier in her career. She now has a thousand cumulative points between the three places that she's been along the way, but not necessarily all of them here. But she's become an impact player for you. So when you take a look at somebody that you're counting on to win a game, knowing the fact that she used to play over on the other side, how does that make things maybe a little different for preparing her for this game versus your other players? You know, she's she's uh, she's a little older. She's in her you know pretty much her fifth year of college mm -hmm. overall. Um, I don't think she's a pretty smart player. She doesn't let again another one that doesn't let the moment get too big because they are experienced and because they've been here. You know, we were here last year. She understands and she was here for that part of the season, so she understands that you know she can't let any um, you know maybe whatever it may be wanting to play better because she used to play there. Whatever it is, she knows that it can't be a personal thing because it's about us as a team and what we do together that's going to win a ball game. So she understands that, and when she's attacking and playing her game, um, it, 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 it's a added thing to us that makes us pretty hard. And of course, the big carrot here this weekend is the automatic qualification to the NCAA tournament. And you know as well as anybody that the committee giveth and the committee taketh away. They gave you the spot two years yeah. ago. They didn't give it to you last year. You were probably more deserving last year than the year before, ironically enough. But yeah. you've been on both sides of it. So I, did, did that in any way shape your messaging to the team for this weekend about not leaving it up to the judges? I'll tell you, I didn't have to say much. Uh, they, they're pretty <laughs> smart and they understand what the you know what happened last year and the way it went down. And it is what it is. And we put ourselves in that position to let other people control our destiny so this year you know they they messaged it themselves and I haven't they said you know we got to take it out of other people's hands and make it you know we have to just grab it instead of let somebody try to give it to us so that's their uh, that's their goal right now we'll see what happens you know day one all right well best of luck out on the floor tonight coach I appreciate that John thank you that's Matt Ducharme head coach of the UMass Dartmouth women's basketball team I'm a Division III student athlete, and I know how powerful words can be. The term gay doesn't mean stupid, lame, or less than. So I pledge to speak up if I hear the term gay used in a derogatory way or any other homophobic terms. If you can play, you can play in Division III. I'm a Division III student athlete, and my teammates unconditionally accepted me as part of their family. So now I pledge to do the same for others. If you can play, you can play in Division III. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello and welcome to the Trip Athletic Center on the campus of the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth for the semifinal round of the 2019 Little East Conference Women's Basketball Tournament in our first of two semifinal matchups tonight. We see the fifth-seeded Rhode Island College anchor women taking on the top-seeded UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. Third time these two teams have met this season. Corsairs swept the regular season series, but are looking for the clean sweep and the third win to try to get to championship Saturday here tomorrow, which will also be at the trip no matter what. They're about to introduce the starting lineups and play the national anthem, so we'll send it across the way to our main man, Greg Antonelli. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America, the veterans of our armed forces and the women in uniform, the women and men in uniform serving the cause of peace and freedom throughout the world. We all please rise and move your caps for the playing of the national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, now introducing the starting lineups for this evening's contest. From Rhode Island College at 40, Junior from Kentucky, Rhode Island, number 20, Ornella Livermento. From UMass Dartmouth at 40, Junior from Hanover, Massachusetts, number 14, Kayla McMahon. From Rhode Island College at 40, Junior from Fall River, Massachusetts, number 4, Jordan Galvin. From UMass Dartmouth at 40, Senior from West Brookfield, Massachusetts, number 33, Just Corson. From Rhode Island College at 40, sophomore from West Warwick, Rhode Island, number three, Brooke Young. From U.S. Dartmouth at 40, junior from Fairhaven, Massachusetts, number 23, Ashley Brown. From Rhode Island College at 40, sophomore from Waltham, Massachusetts, number 13, Sophia Courier. From U.S. Dartmouth at 40, senior from Pawtucket, Rhode Island, number three, Daniel Gonzalez. From Rhode Island College at Century Four, a freshman from Providence, Rhode Island, number 32, Wilton McBurrow. And from UMass Dartmouth at, at Century, senior from New Bedford, Massachusetts, number 20, Victoria Exeman. The head coach for the Anglo Women is Jenna Cosgrove. The assistant coaches for the Anglo Women is Vandal Andre, Alex Moore, and Amy Stacey. The head coach for the Corsairs is Mr. Matthew Sharma. And the assistant coach for the course here is Alex Berman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you must start with the Little East Conference of the NCAA broken sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We all request your cooperation for supporting the participants and officials. All right, we welcome you back in over on the other side of the court where the anchor women and the Corsairs are set to begin semi-final action. Your officials for today's game, Corey Pothier, Lauren Silva, and Thomas St. Michel. Starting fives, no surprises either way in this one. For Rhode Island College, number three, Brooke Young, number four, Jordan Govin, number 13, Sophia Guerrier, number 20, Ornella Livermento, and number 32, Wilshire McBorough. Over on the Corsair side, the usual suspects. Three, Danielle Gonzalez, 14, Kayla McMahon, 20, Nakira Eximon, number 22, Ashley Brown, and number 33, Jess Korzak. So Nakira Eximon, all smiles there at center court as she awaits the opening tap. Winner of this one gets the winner of the next one between Southern Maine and Eastern Connecticut for a trip to the Little East Conference Championship game tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock here at the Trip Athletic Center. That game will be here regardless of who wins this one. Ashley Brown controls the opening tap. Corsairs in their home whites as regular season champions of the Little East. Moving from left to right on your screen. Eximon handles the inbound, kicks out. Open three in the corner, knocked down. Good start for the Corsairs as Kayla McMahon picks up a triple right away. McMahon, a junior out of Hanover, Mass. You saw the anchor women get caught trying to cheat a little bit and double team inside on Eximon. She made the good inside out pass. You can score a lot of points that way if your perimeter shooters can make shots because Eximon's going to attract a lot of attention inside. Livermento puts it back out to the wing and up top. Jordan Govin steps in. Govin has it taken away in the corner by Brown. And there goes Matt Ducharme trying to fire everybody up. Errant pass outside the reach of the diving Nakira Eximon. The ball will go over to Rhode Island College. All right, Jordan Govin, the Fall River native. Running the offense here for the anchor women. Gives it off for Gurrier. And around to the left for Livermento. Livermento passes up to the free throw line. Jumper by Gurrier, no good. And what's the foul going to be? That's going to be a tough first foul on Nakira Eximon. Wilsha McBorrow decided to just completely bend up and over Eximon's shoulders. And Akira picks up that foul. That's one that could have just as easily gone the other way or more aptly just not been a foul at all. 
First foul on Nakira, and it comes very early in the contest, just a minute 19 in. Normally, we see Shea Carrero come into the game after Nakira's first foul, but that was so early that Matt Ducharme's going to leave her out there a little bit. Bounce entry to the lane. Or is taken by Liveramento. Her jumper is short. McBurrow the offensive rebound. She's got the size advantage on Eximon. There's not many players that can say that. She's one of them, and she's only a freshman. Somebody that figures to be a big, big matchup problem in this conference for a number of years to come. But Nakira comes right back and gets the measured revenge immediately. And she scores and hangs a foul over on the other side. Foul should be on McBurrow, which should be her first. Eximon's free throw rattles in. So she converts the old-fashioned three-point play. And the Corsairs have got the lead up to four points now at 6-2. to two. Obviously their largest lead of the game so far. Pretty soft foul called there on Jess Korzak on the run by. So UMD has picked up two fouls in under two minutes. Not a whole lot going on on either of those whistles. But it'll be Rhode Island College basketball. Ball in play. There's a lot more contact there, but that wasn't called with Gonzalez against Govan. Govan enters to Livermento. Pass through to Gurrier. Step back three-pointer. Misses short. Exum on the conference's leading rebounder. Grabs it and gets it ahead to Korzak. Korzak's got excellent speed. And Rhode Island College misses when she was wearing their colors. 7.37 to go. In the first quarter, UMD out in, in front by eight points here early. Livermento had it tipped away, got it back. McBurrow makes a good pass down to Gurrier, who shoots and scores. Gurrier is sophomore out of Waltham Mass and Waltham High. And she has the lead right now, down to four points at 8-4. Gonzalez traveled prior to throwing that pass. Rhode Island College will take it back down four with 7.09 to play first quarter. Anchor woman coached by Jenna Cosgrove, assisted by Vandell Andrade and Alex Moore. Corsairs coached by Matt Ducharme, assisted by Alex Berman. Travel called on Gauvin, and it'll go back over to UMass Dartmouth. So Lauren Silva calling both of those travels at each end of the floor. And UMD goes back to work in front by four with 6.56 to go in the quarter. Lob entry tipped and taken away by Livermento. Ornella Livermento races it down and scores. Nakira Exumon didn't want to give a second foul there, so she tried to distract Livermento. Didn't work. Gonzalez lobs it in. Nakira strong with the right hand, a little too strong. Wild off the window and grabbed in the other direction by Govan. Stolen away now by Brown. Brown's looking in Korzak's direction, forces that push pass up. Korzak spins, shoots, can't get it to go. Eximon flies in for the rebound, has it blocked by Livermento, gets it back and scores anyway. Good toughness inside there by Nakira Eximon. Trying to make sure this is not her final collegiate game. UMD in front, 10-6, and another travel called on Rhode Island College. That one called on Brooke Young. Let's take another look at all this effort here by Nakira Eximon to make sure she converted. Korzak couldn't get the bounce there, and you see Nakira flying around for that rebound, got it blocked, put it to the floor once, and then went up and scored anyway. McMahon travel. This has been a travel-happy officiating crew so far. They're calling them left, right, and center. Livermento puts the entry pass into Gurrier. And the anchor women will go back to work here, trailing by four as they have been for much of the game so far. McBurrow's lob entry tipped by Gurrier, and she goes out to receive it. Excuse me, that's Taylor Thompson in off the bench wearing number 25. Reverse to the near side. Three-pointer missed by Brooke Young. 
Danielle Gonzalez comes away with it, up ahead to Eximon, who forces it forward for McMahon. McMahon spins, kicks out, Brown's alone for three. Bad idea. Brown. Ashley Brown, lethal. When you give her that much room to shoot, she knocks that one down. Corsairs have had a couple of threes early. And they're now in front by their largest margin of the game at 13 to six. Kick over to the left side. Young to the floor, got fouled on the inside. Looks like it's going to be against Ashley Brown. Speaking of, let's take a look at her previous three-pointer. You see she had just enough cushion there. Her defender got caught napping, peeking at the ball on the other side, lost track of her assignment. And you can't do that with Ashley Brown. Brooke Young now at the line, shooting a pair, makes the first. Foul was, in fact, the first on Ashley Brown. Third on UMass Dartmouth, Govan comes back in. McBorough goes to the bench, so an opportunity here for the Corsairs with Eximond in the game and McBorough out. Big mismatch inside. Second free throw no good, Nakira grabs the rebound. And let's see if the Corsairs look to feature her in the short run. Gonzalez runs into traffic, did she get fouled? Looks as though she did on the floor. And it was a foul on Rhode Island College. It'll be a baseline out of bounds when we come back. Get our first media timeout of the ball game. We'll take a break and come right back. Your score, Corsairs 13, Anchor Women 7. You're watching the 2019 Little East Conference Tournament on Little East TV and DC TV. Arnie getting into it over in front of the Corsair bench. Getting people to make some noise there. Brought his own noise thermometer and everything. 13-7, the early advantage for UMD. And Matt Ducharme will sit Nakira Eximond out of that timeout. So remember, she picked up the foul very early on. But given the fact that Wilshire McBorough came out of the game for Rhode Island College, I thought we would see more of Nakira given that matchup advantage, but they're going to take her out. So Shea Carrero is on. Lauren Empey is also on. So the Corsairs keeping their taller players on the floor, just taking Nakira out in the process. Entries to Lauren Empey, and it goes right in and out of her hands. That's where 20 would have been. Stolen by Taylor Thompson. Thompson gives it out for Young. Young trapped in the corner by Empey. Low pass. Caught on the floor. And Danielle Gonzalez low to the ground, plucks it away. Up ahead for Korzak. Korzak for Carrero. Carrero here in footsteps, steps up, takes the elbow jumper in and out. Empey's got her hands on it, doesn't hang on to it, though. Ball out of bounds. Last touched, they say, by Rhode Island College. So UMass Dartmouth will hold on to possession with 28 seconds to shoot. Danielle Gonzalez set to inbound. And she enters, tried to enter to Carrero, knocked away from her out of bounds. Corsairs keep possession, 426 remaining first quarter. As there you see Jenna Cosgrove. She's had an excellent year at the helm of Rhode Island College as they come in with an overall record of 18 and 8. 9 and 7 in Little East Conference play. Brown, right hand float up and good. Ashley Brown looking good early. She's made back-to-back -back field goal attempts. And the Corsairs lead. Stands at eight, their largest of the game, 15-7. Gurrier calling up a new offensive play. UMD looking to go back to their bench as Megan Donovan will come in next. Inside shot, no good by Livermento. Brown grabs the rebound, and she can mosey with that ball in her hands. Gonzalez looking for a screen, gets it from Carrero. Now the lob inside a little high for Carrero. She dribbles, goes back out. Empey is open. Gonzalez gives it up for Carrero. Easy it shot for Shea. Her first of the ball game. And UMD's lead now stands at 10-17-7. UMD was ahead 13-6, so a 4-1 run since then. Wild right-hander, no good. Korzak grabs the rebound of the Gurrier miss. 
And UMD trying to take control of this game in the early going. Carrero sets the screen. Gonzalez lost the ball. And she backed away from it like somebody knocked it away from her, but that wasn't the case. And McBorrow is going to come back in. Donovan will come in for the core series. Here's a look at Carrero's make. So she gave it up outside. Gonzalez took on three defenders. And if you let Shea face the basket like that, she's very capable of hitting that shot. So UMD by 10 now at 17-7. Look for them to try to find McBorrow inside. A lot of steps by Livermento. Indeed, she traveled. And so the Corsairs take possession again. 2.56 to go first half. Anchor women will quickly get Mayor Gallagher in there. Gallagher, a freshman out of Worcester, Mass, and Burncoat High. Brown around a high screen, steps back, finds some room to shoot. No. Two bounces off the front rim, but no cigar. Rebound by McBorough. Up ahead for Young. Young kicks it. Govin looking for three. Misses short. Empey got her hand on the rebound, but loses the ball out of bounds. Empey just has to be able to work on her hands. She's gotten to the ball a number of times, but hasn't been able to control it. Young puts it in play to Livermento. Livermento gets free and hits with the left hand. Ornella Livermento has four of Rhode Island College's nine points, and they're back within eight at 17-9. Korzak throws it into traffic, stolen away by Livermento, two on two up the other way. Livermento gives to Govan, who swings it around, open three available for Gallagher, no, spit out. Corsair is fortunate there. Donovan ahead, baseball pass to Korzak, who dribbles behind the back, keeps it moving quick, backs it out to the corner, takes Govan off the dribble, runs into contact, and hangs a second foul on Wilshire McBorough, that's key. McBorough is Rhode Island College's biggest matchup advantage. But two early fouls does not help that cause. Here's another look. Looked like McBorough had the ball there. Rhode Island College none too happy with that call. Nevertheless, Jess Korzak going to the line and right on cue. Nakira Eximond will come back into the game just as McBorough is going to come out. So Matt Ducharme will try to leverage that matchup. In substitution for the Corsairs, checking in number 20, Nakira Eximond. Three points for Jess Korzak, who's the Corsair's second leading scorer, 12.3 per game, a 74% free throw shooter coming in, counting that make now 52 for 70 on the season. Second free throw is good. So four on the game for Jess, and it's a 19-9 Corsair lead. Gallagher to the top of the key. Fernandez. Three-second violation called away from the basketball. And so that turnover gets UMD back in control with a 10-point lead. Still 145 left to go in the first quarter. And substitution for the Corsairs to kick number three, Danielle Gonzalez. Danielle Gonzalez comes in. Jess Korzak comes out to get some extra rest through the quarter break. So the Corsairs with three of their starting five on the floor right now. Anytime Brown and Eximond are out there together, you've got an, a superb threat both inside and outside. Eximond spins, shoots, misses short. Good job walling her off defensively by Fernandez. Govin bluffs on the pass, puts to the floor. Corsair shift their defense with 17 on the shot clock. Livermento moves inside on Empey. Govan hanging on to the ball, now gives Livermento, elbow jumper rattles in. Took a nice bounce there for Livermento. She's the team's leading scorer, in fact the game's leading scorer with six here early. Rick back within eight as we enter the final minute of the quarter. High pass caught by Donovan. Gonzalez takes the screen, kicks out, Empey, head fake, steps in. Spins, loses the ball, gets it, shoots, and misses. Eximon got a hand on it, but is taken away 
Doing a good job doubling her on the glass. So Livermento came away with the ball, gets it up to Govan, who comes up and hits. Back to back buckets for Rhode Island College, and they've got it to two possessions at 19 13. With 24 seconds remaining, first quarter. Shot clock turned off. Corsairs can hold out for the final shot if they choose. Brown will come be the ball handler for the situation to get it away from Lauren Empey. Brown backs it out and now enters. Eggs him on. Foul on the floor. Anchor women had it to give, so the Corsairs do not get bonus free throws there. They would if there were another foul. That might be the Corsairs' best bet right here. First foul on Livermento. Four point nine seconds remaining. Gonzalez has to get it in. Overshoots. Stolen away by Livermento. Donovan gets it back. Passes time for a shot. Gonzalez has to let it go. Didn't get it off in time. That basket won't count. Corsairs were oblivious to the clock. It probably started late anyway. There was a lot of action there for 4.9 seconds. Corsairs shouldn't have scored there. They didn't. And at the end of one, they lead it by a score of 19 to 13. So we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with second quarter action. You're watching the 2019 Little East Conference semifinal on Little East TV and DC TV. All right, welcome back to the Trip Athletic Center as we get for set for second quarter action. Corsairs have got the lead by six right now at 19 to 13. UMD had a larger lead earlier in the quarter. They were up 17 to seven, but you had a pretty good finish to the period for Rhode Island College as they went on a 6-2 run to wrap it up to get back within six. Anchor women with the ball to begin the second quarter as they were saved by the bell on their stop at the end of the first. Jumper, no good. Gonzalez collects the rebound. Gonzalez looking to get out and run. Advances to Kayla McMahon. McMahon advances to Eximon, who gets in. Misses Wild. Tried to chase down the ball. Didn't get there. Fell to the ground. So a numbers advantage here for the anchor women. And they're quick in transition. Nicely played by Gurrier and company. As they come up with two points there. And they make it a six-point game at 19-13. McMahon puts to the floor. Nakira crosses over, now spins right hander up and good. Seven points in the first half for the senior out of New Bedford. And the Corsairs lead by six again at 21 15. Nine minutes to play first half. Corsairs looking to advance to the Little East Championship game for the third time in program history. Three pointer up and good. A rainmaker there by Brooke Young. And the anchor women as close as they've been in a long time within three points at 21-18. Korzak around a screen, returns to Nakira. Nakira blocked inside. Gets the ball back, goes up. She's looking for foul calls, isn't getting them. Ornella Livermento letting her have it inside. Livermento, one tough cookie out of Pawtucket. Hands it off. Anchor women had a chance to shoot for the tie there. Didn't take it. And that's why. Good Taylor ball. Thompson good runs in, takes the higher percentage shot, drains it. And the Greenville, South Carolina native has this margin down to just one point at 21 to 20. A 13 to 4 run for Rhode Island College. Loose ball and a reach in foul in the most literal sense of the term against Gurrier right there. And here's a look back the other way. You'll see what I'm talking about. Thompson was open for three if she wanted it. Didn't. And came in and took that lollipop of a shot. Got it. Nothing but net. And it's a one-point game. Carrero back in. Eximon goes to the bench for UMass Dartmouth. As it's been some tough minutes for her out there 
in this first half. She's getting physical, and Matt Ducharme wants to make sure she doesn't pick up a premature second foul. Gonzalez inbounds to Korzek. Korzek off to the right side for McMahon. McMahon dribbles once, picks it up. Korzek receives and hands it out for Carrera. 15 to shoot. Gonzalez, good cross over there. Spins, gets a little room for a right hand, but was too far off from the basket. Was looking for a foul call there, didn't get it. Anchor women looking to take their first lead. No. The jumper is no good. Ball loose in the corner. An offensive rebound for the anchor women. They're playing with some serious momentum right now. Three and the lead. Thompson, no misses short, but Gurrier makes the catch. Score it and one. Anchor women starting to believe. They've got the lead. They're playing with all the momentum. And they've got a chance to widen the lead back out to two right here. Shot missed well short. McMahon might have gotten a piece of it. And the Corsairs probably would have been better off if she hadn't. Livermento will come out. Should get a good round of applause as she comes off. Fernandez back in for Rhode Island College. And Gurrier at the stripe. Trying to finish off the three-point play. Her free throw is good. Anchor women looking really good. They've got their largest lead of the game at two points right now. Just took their first lead of the game. And the respite for Nakira Eximon proves to be very, very brief as they get her right back out. 7.27 to play first half. UMD finds itself trailing for the first time all game. Gonzalez for three. Tried to get it all back on one shot. Didn't. And now the anchor women get a chance to build a first half lead. Govin working on Korzek. Some fancy dribbling of her own there. Leaves it for Young. Young around to the right side. Floater no good by Thompson. An offensive rebound and a foul. It's going to put Annalicia Fernandez to the free throw line. Corsair's coming unglued here these last couple of minutes. Been a rough second quarter to this point. Kayla McMahon picking up her first foul. Corsair's fortunate that one wasn't on Eximont. Would have been her second. First free throw for Fernandez is good for her first point of the game. Freshman forward on a Taunton Mass and Brockton High. Fernandez just a 48% free throw shooter on the air, up to 50 with that make. 15 makes and 30 tries. Misses the second as the numbers said she would. Eximon nearly got caught up in a held ball, and instead they're going to call a foul on Gurrier. It's going to be Gurrier's second. So Gurrier and McBorough each with two fouls apiece. Fouls now even at two aside for the quarter. Inbound pass comes to Danielle Gonzalez, who calls up the new play. Of course, Sears have been outscored in the second quarter 11-2. Gonzalez enters, and there's a foul on the floor where Nakira Eximond was. So the Corsairs were looking for these whistles a couple of minutes ago. Now all of a sudden they're getting them. Fernandez called for her first. So Taylor Thompson will quickly come back into the game. Fernandez goes to the bench, accepts a high five from Jenna Cosgrove. Entry to Eximont. She leaves it out for McMahon, who was thinking about a quick three but kept it down. Entry pass tipped. Nakira was the last one to touch it. So the first series turn it over. Ugly start to this second quarter for UMass Dartmouth as the top seeds have been outscored in the period. 11-2. And they now trail the game by three. Livermento back over to the right side for Young. Her three-pointer is really what started to change this whole game. Thompson to the dribble. Spins, shoots, no good. Offensive rebound, though. Gurrier got fouled and scored. Second time she's done that in this game. And Sophia Gurrier, all five foot four of her, playing like the biggest player on the floor right now. And watch the way. She psychs up her teammates walking away after the make. So 
She'll go to the line looking for one more. She's got it. Sophia Gurrier with 10 first half points. Making the difference for Rhode Island College right now as they've got their largest lead of the game, 27-21. Gonzalez, bad shot. Ball taken away there, and what is this going to be? Thompson looked like she ran into her own teammate, but they're going to call a second foul on Nakira Eximar. Corsair's continuing to make some changes, but we'll see if we can get another look at what did or didn't happen there as the anchor women take possession again with 5.55 to go first half. Jordan Moretti on the floor. Megan Donovan out there. Shea Carrero. Nakira Eximon now off. So is Ashley Brown. So Matt Ducharme trying to change up the mix. And looks like we have a foul away from the ball against Rhode Island College. Let's take another look at the last foul. Keep an eye on Nakira Eximon who got called for at number 20. And yep, there was the contact there. So she picks up her second and is likely done for the half. Time out on the floor here. As UMass Dartmouth has elected to call a 30-second timeout. 5.45 remaining in the first half with the Corsairs suddenly trailing by six. Again, they led by six at the end of the first quarter, so that means a 12-point swing in some four minutes, 15 seconds as Rhode Island College has gone on a 14-2 run. As there you see the man, the myth, and the legend, Frank Sherman. Not enough Diet Pepsi in the world for this weekend. Anchor women have to be feeling very good about what's been going on here, in particular the play they've gotten from Sophia Gurrier, who's up to 10 points on the ball game. And they've already hung four fouls on UMass Dartmouth, so they are in the bonus for the remaining 545 of the half. So too are the Corsairs, though. So there may be a lot of free throws out there to be had between now and the end of the first half. Again, the winner of this game advances to the Little East Conference Championship game, which will be here tomorrow, even if Rhode Island College wins it. They would play a neutral site championship game here tomorrow. Them's the rules. Corsairs would take on the winner of our nightcap between Southern Maine and Eastern Connecticut. We'll have that game for you a little later on here on CorsairAthletics.com and Little East TV, also on DC TV for those of you watching on local cable. Entry pass comes in to Jordan Moretti, a freshman guard out of Johnston, Rhode Island, who had some very promising showings earlier in the year for the Corsairs. Korzak just barely hanging on to it, passes to Carrero, who gets through traffic and scores. Corsairs going to need a lift from somebody on their bench. Shea Carrero trying to be that somebody. 27-23 the score with 5.20 to play, first half. Young. One dribble, lobs inside, look who's back out there, McBurrow in the absence of Eximon, passes to Livramento who misses two in close takes. McMahon now in transition, stops and starts, leaves it for Korzak. Korzak steps back, was thinking about a three, Gord Govin daring her to shoot it, she does, no good off the back iron. A lot of contact down there and Livramento comes out of the pack with a rebound. Livramento. Shovels it back for Young, finds an open spot to shoot. Too much on it, hit the rubber strap, that basket will be disallowed. Corsairs take the ball back with 4.44 to go in the half, and that should bring us to our media time out here with 4.44 remaining in the first half. But we're going to play through it. Jordan Moretti brings the ball across half court. And kicks over the right side. Kayla McMahon puts up a three and knocks it down. So the Corsairs rather fortunate there was no timeout there. As UMD's cut it to a one-point game at 27-26. Lob entry to the paint. Livramento. Inside out. Three-pointer available. Thompson misses on the answer. But look who's got it again. Sophia Gurrier taking this game over for Rhode Island College. She's got 12 of Rick's 26. Wild shot there by Carrero, nothing doing. Livermento playing some excellent interior defense and she'll go coast to coast, kicks it out. They bring it back, Young for three, in and out. McMahon the rebound. Corsairs trailing by three with 3.50 to go in the half. Moretti backs it up and leaves it for McMahon. 
McMahon bounce entry down low for Carrero. Her shot's no good. And again, Livermento eating glass down that end of the floor for Rhode Island College. Three twenty-five remaining in the half. Livermento uncontested off the dribble, but Donovan did enough to bother it on the way in. Thirteen seconds remain on the shot clock. 321 on the first half game clock. Of course, Sirius had some substantial leads early in this game, most notably 17 to 7. And the Yankee women have outscored the Corsairs 22 to 9 in the time thereafter to turn a 10 point deficit into a three point lead. Five second violation there on the Island College. They'll make a late substitution to get Fernandez back into the game. Fernandez comes on. And number one, Mayor Gallagher. And Mayor Gallagher comes on as well. So the Corsair is very happy to see Gurrier come out of the game with 321 to play first half. Entry pass. Comes into Moretti. Donovan one dribble to Korzak. Korzak backs it out. Finds some room. Gets into the lane. Right hander. Bounces in and she gets the continuation. Big play there by the senior Rhode Island College transfer. And she'll march to the charity stripe with a chance to tie it up with 3.09 to play in the half. Here's another look. See how she created that separation, drew the contact, and got the bounce. Korzak makes the free throw to boot. That's an all-conference type of play right there. At a critical junction in this game as we're now knotted at 29. Three minutes to go, first half. Halftime lead hanging in the balance. Who can close out these final three minutes? Had a nice burst from the anchor women, but can they sustain it? Thompson, wild right-hander, no good, but an offensive rebound by Fernandez, stripped on the way up, but McMahon lost the ball out of bounds. Anchor men, excuse me, anchor women have benefited from the Corsairs' inability to secure the ball along the baseline several times in this first half. That was the latest example. Young lobs it in and gets it out high enough for Govan. Govan steps through traffic, kicks it out to a wide open Thompson. No good off the front rim. Tell you what, if the anchor women heat up from three, Corsairs are going to be in serious trouble. They've been bailed out by a number of good bounces off the rim. Moretti with a bad pass, saved in play by Donovan. None of the Corsairs were expecting a save, so the ball stays live, and the anchor women have numbers down the other side of the floor. Corsairs do settle into their half-court defense, though. Govan picks up the dribble. Tie game still with 2.15 to play in the half. Thompson banks it in off the window. Taylor Thompson with four points off the bench. McMahon, bounce entry for Empey. Empey falling away, can't get enough on it. Easy rebound for Govan. And the anchor women will get a chance to build their lead now with under two minutes remaining in the half. Govan drops it back for Young. Young backs out. Thompson to the wing. Gallagher dribbles up top. Fernandez over to Govan. Govan enters inside. Thompson dribbles through traffic. Stolen away by Megan Donovan who dribbles her way out of traffic. Donovan on the move. Gets it ahead for Moretti. Moretti throws it up. Can't get it to go, but she'll go to the free throw line. Donovan a sophomore. Over to Moretti, the freshman. Future bright here for UMD. Foul was the second on Jordan Govan, so Govan, McBorough, and Gurrier are now with two fouls apiece for Rhode Island College. Moretti makes her first of two free throws. She's a 64% free throw shooter coming in at 16 for 25. As you see, Matt Ducharme, who was fired up right from the very beginning of this game. Moretti hits both. It's a big contribution from a freshman in a huge game. And we start again, 31 all with under 90 seconds remaining in the half. Govan steps right, crosses over, dribbled it off her own shin and out of bounds, and she wasn't even trying to argue that that was deflected. So one of very few unforced mistakes by Rhode Island College in this game. And Govan, as soon as she heard the horn, knew it was for her, didn't even have to look. And Sophia Gurrier is coming back on to see if she can work her magic again. She's the game's leading scorer with 12 at the moment. 
We're knotted at 31 as the ball comes back in play for Moretti. Moretti off to McMahon. Donovan steps left, gives it up. Moretti around to Brown. Brown through traffic, kicks out from McMahon. McMahon dribbling with a left hand, switches to the right to shoot, put just a little too much on it. Easy rebound there for Thompson. As the anchor women force it ahead, Fernandez travel. Corsairs, if they hit it just right now, could go two for one on possessions over this final minute with a 30 second shot clock and 53 and a half seconds left on the game clock. Ball in play for Moretti. Moretti into the front court. Donovan bounces it to the baseline. Good catch there by Empey. Empey looking to pass. Brown's looking for the ball. They can't get it to her. Now they do. Brown shifts along the baseline. Too much on the shot. Gets her own miss, though. Plucks it away. Draws contact. And will get herself to the free throw line with 33.4 seconds remaining in the half. Now Jamie Williams, as she often will, will come in for final minute defense. How about that scrap from Ashley Brown to get herself to the line? Ashley Brown, an 83% free throw shooter, 38 for 46 on the season. And she's right on the money with her first, and the Corsairs at long last take the lead back at 32-31. Gallagher comes out, and Govin goes right back in. Two fouls in all. So Govin on the foul on the floor with two fouls. And Gurrier is as well. McBorough out of the game with two fouls. As she's mainly in there to try to be Nakira Eximon's shadow. And Nakira's been sitting with the two fouls. Brown hits both free throws. Jamie Williams comes back into the game for the Corsairs. Ashley Brown goes to the bench. So the Corsair is going to have to try to find some unconventional scoring sources if they get another opportunity. But the anchor women figure to use a lot of this clock that's left. Livermento back into the game for the anchor women, number 20. Keep an eye out for her on this possession. Career as well. Jenna Cosgrove barking in the instructions. Livermento dribbles up top, goes around, and loses the ball off her own leg and out of bounds. Corsairs now will get Nakira Eximon back on the floor with 17.6 seconds to go. Assiduous moves in the final second of a quarter by Matt Ducharme, a hallmark of his coaching tenure here at UMass Dartmouth. So he's got Eximon back out there for the potential for interior scoring. Gets Ashley Brown back on the floor for perimeter scoring. So the Corsairs put all their eggs in the offensive basket for the final 17 seconds of the half. Brown looking for a high screen, got it. Forgot about the ball, had to reroute to get it. Brown forces one up, can't get it to go. Rebound taken by Thompson, no time left to shoot. She chucks it in the direction of the basket, came closer than I thought it would, but it does not go. So the anchor women have themselves an excellent second quarter that they win by a hefty margin, 20 to, excuse me, 18 to 12. But the Corsairs make a good late stand in the period in order to come back and regain the lead. 18 to 14, excuse me, ends up being the final margin for the quarter. UMD loses four points off the lead, but they still have the overall lead at halftime by a margin of 33 to 31. So Rhode Island College wins the second quarter after the Corsairs won the first. And we've got a snug one as we head back for intermission. We've got a 15 minute halftime coming from the Trip Athletic Center. If you're watching the live stream, Believe me when I tell you, we're hanging in here. We'll have second half action for you on the other side. If you're watching on cable, we'll be right back through the Magic of Television with second half play in just a moment on Little East TV and DC TV.
Welcome back to the Trip Athletic Center where we've got a lot to decide in the next 20 minutes of basketball. Corsairs have got the lead at the break, 33-31 over Rhode Island College, but Rhode Island College had a very strong second quarter showing to climb back into the game that they had once been trailing by 10. They led for much of the second half, led by as many as six, and the Corsairs actually closed out on a 12-4 run to grab the lead back at 33-31. So the Corsairs will have the ball first in their home whites as the top seed and the regular season champion trying to advance the Little East Conference championship game for the second time in as many years here at the Trip Athletic Center. Jess Korzek along with the rest of the Corsairs starting five out there and Ashley Brown wasting no time to get in on the scoring here in the second half. Corsairs widen that lead out to four at 35-31. Govan picks up her dribble, nearly traveled. Livramento backs it out, lobs it in for McBorrow, who's back in the game, misses the shot. Korzek was favoring her left knee, but appears to be running okay now. Oh, and Nikira Eximon gets crossed up with Wilshire McBorrow. And we'll see which way they go with this foul. It's on McBurrow. She picks up a very early third foul just 42 seconds into the second half. Crowd's been growing as this game's been going along. Of course, we've got a number of fans here to see the second game as well, in addition to all the players from both those teams, Eastern Connecticut and Southern Maine. Korzak fouled and will get herself to the free throw line in all likelihood. Here's a look at the prior foul. McBurrow's third foul against Eximon, as you see the two of them got tangled up there. I think Nakira just fell. He called a foul on McBurrow. Might have gotten their feet tangled up. Korzak at the line, shooting two. A foul call. It's the second of the half against Rhode Island College. They called it on Brooke Young, her first. Korzak still perfect from the free throw line as she makes two right there. Of course, Sears slowly but surely growing that lead again. They've got it up to six at 37-31. Corsairs have led by as many as 10 here tonight. That was back at 17-7. Errant pass inside, and Livermento was starting to run away, but they're going to say Rhode Island college ball. So the anchor women catch a bit of a break there. So you see Matt Ducharme still very, very much on edge as he often is anytime the game's competitive over in that course here coaching box. Young inside left hander they'll call an offensive foul good job by Eximon standing in there waiting to take the contact. Young picks up her second foul but more pertinently Rhode Island College has already committed three. They just can't do that that far away from the basket that's a textbook charge. And good on Nakira Eximon for taking that contact. Largest crowd we've had for a game, women's or men's, this year. That stands the reason when it gets to be this time of year. Kick out. They're going to call what here? Going to call an offensive foul against Nakira Eximon away from the ball. So Eximon and McCorro each with three fouls. And that will very quickly get Shea Carrero back to the table. And Akira now has to be careful that she doesn't pick up an extremely early fourth on this possession. That's a vulnerability in the Corsair defense. Livermento, though, just hits the elbow jumper. Does it the hard way. The anchor women grab their first points of the second half. Ball out of bounds, and I thought Nakira Eximond was coming off. Now she is. Carrero back in. They call the foul on Livermento. Livermento picks up an early third, so foul trouble, a real issue for the anchor women, both with personal fouls and team fouls, as they've got two impact players in Livermento and McBorrow playing with three. McBorrow off the floor right now, in fact. Carrero trying to take advantage of that, and does she ever? What a move by Shea Carrero. With the spinner Rooney on the way to the basket to get the Corsairs in front by six. Bounce entry to the block, and Gonzalez going to get called for a reach-in foul there. Looked like she might have gotten a piece of the ball. We'll take another look at that pretty shot by Shea Carrero. Quite the move there.
Livramento rises, misses short, but gets her own miss in a sea of white jerseys. Corsairs can't let that happen. Thompson misses. Brown comes up with the air ball. Lobs it ahead. Korzak gets there first, falling away. Can't get it to go. Rebound collected by Livermento. Can that girl hustle? Livermento has it knocked away from behind by Brown, but the anchor woman will keep the ball. Some tremendous effort plays by Livermento at both ends of the floor tonight. McBorough comes back in. And Shea Carrero faces a big challenge here, and this isn't going to go anywhere. These two are going to be matched up with one another, likely for the next three years here in the Little East. Three-pointer from up top, rattles out, goes off Korzak's foot, bouncing all around. Govin able to get the jump ball, and the arrow belongs to Rhode Island College. Young puts the ball in play. Livermento working on McMahon. Drives under the basket. Passes right into Carrero's hand. So she tips it and takes it. Corsair's looking to widen the lead out to three possessions. Good crossover there by McMahon. Who spins inside and goes right into McBorough's hands. Can't do that. No other outcome was going to happen there. And then McMahon gives the foul to make matters worse. The third Corsair foul of the quarter. So the fouls are stacked up in both directions here very early in this third quarter. Seven minutes, 12 seconds left to go in the third. And there's only one combined foul to give left out there. So expect a lot of free throws before the fourth quarter. Corsair showing some pressure. Good communication between Gordon, Govin, excuse me, and Thompson to get that ball in. Thompson looking inside toward McBorough. They didn't go there. And she got position on Carrero. Still has it, as a matter of fact. Thompson races in and scores. Great take by Taylor Thompson. Thompson with a half dozen. The anchor women cut it to four at 39-35. So UMD had a chance to make it a three-possession lead, and they failed. Brown. Lobs a pass through to Carrero. Carrero goes around McBorough, switches to the right hand, but didn't get that shot off the glass. Brown plucks it, comes in and scores. Good cleanup job there by Ashley Brown. She's into double digits as the Corsair's leading scorer tonight. And UMD pushes that lead back up to its second half high of six at 41-35. Govin drops it. Thompson bluffs on the three, steps inside, gives to McBorough. Inside out for Govan. Govan with eight to shoot. Steps through traffic. Kicks to the right side. Gurrier, no, off the front rim. Govan got a hand on it. Somehow ripped it away from Korzek. Lost the ball out of bounds, but got it out of bounds off Gonzalez. And so the anchor women will hang on to it with most of a fresh shot clock here. 29 seconds left to shoot. And this has been a, a real problem for the Corsairs tonight, just an inability to secure the ball along the baseline. That's a very good call because Gonzalez was out of bounds when she touched it. Livermento off the dribble inside, shoots and scores. Very nice game being turned in by Ornella Livermento tonight. She's into double digits with 10. Brown looking inside to Carrero, goes across to Corzet. Korzak off the dribble. Bounce pass. Good one to Carrero through double coverage. She gets blocked on the way up. No foul call. Carrero was looking for one, didn't get it. And UMD is left to regroup with 14 on the shot clock. Gonzalez needs to get the ball in and does safely to Brown. Brown has a screen, steps back, looking for three. No. Rebound chased down by Thompson. Anchor women with a chance to make it a one possession game again. Still over five minutes to go here in the third quarter. A long, long way to go. Kira Eximond out of the game with three fouls right now. Seven to shoot. Livermento spins, gets stood up by Gonzalez. One second, and that shot clock's going to expire. They didn't know about it. And so the Corsairs get the stop the hard way as they guard for 30 full seconds. And we've got a timeout on the floor, the media timeout. 
So we will take it as well. 4.58 to go third quarter. Your score, Corsairs 41, Ankle Women 37. You're watching the 2019 Little East Conference Women's Basketball Tournament on Little East TV and DC TV. Welcome back to the Trip Athletic Center. 4.58 to go in the third quarter. Corsairs in front by four. Although they've been threatening to make that more than six, they've yet to do so. Corsairs have led for the entirety of the third quarter. And they've been doing that for the most part without Nakira Eximon, who picked up an early third foul. Shea Carrero's been in there since, has done admirably in her place is really she's done throughout the season. It's a big reason why the Corsairs are 21 and four. It's a big reason why they're playing at home tonight. Gonzalez puts the ball in play to Ashley Brown. Brown steps forward, peels back, up top for McMahon and around to Gonzalez. Gonzalez dribbles through, kicks to Korzek, who head fakes, finds the baseline, gets blocked on the way up by Livermento. Ball out of play, last touch by Livermento. Corsairs hang on to possession with 11 seconds to shoot. Donovan comes in, Gonzalez comes out. And so Ashley Brown will become the de facto point guard in the absence of Danielle Gonzalez here. Entry stolen, clean away by Gurrier right in front of Brown's face. Incredible play there. Gurrier faking one way, goes the other, gets fouled, will get to the line. And she plays with some serious pep in her step. Donovan picks up the foul. I believe swagger would be the better word for how she plays. She draws the foul there, and you see while that ball's in the air already trying to fire up her teammates as she heads to the free throw line. Gurrier shooting two right on the money with the first one. Gurrier a 55% free throw shooter on the year, but hits both there. At times tonight, she's been the best player on the floor. She's the leading scorer for the whole game with 14. Carrero takes the bounce entry, had good position, but made that shot a little too hard on herself. Got her back to the basket and spun it. Anko women now with a chance to tie or take the lead with 4.14 to play third quarter. Block inside by Carrero. Shut down Thompson there. From point blank range, Bill Russell style. Took the ball too. McMahon, no. A lot of contact there. Will they call a foul on Carrero? No, looks like they'll call it the other way on Rhode Island College. They're going to get Thompson for a foul. Let's take another look at this big-time block by Shea Carrera. No doubt about that. All ball, only ball. And because there were so many early fouls, the Corsairs are already in the bonus. At, excuse me. The foul was on Shea Carrera and not on Taylor Thompson, which is the correct call. I was confused. Not the officials. So they'll walk it up the other end, and it'll be two free throws. Remember the rule changes in women's basketball a couple years ago, they did away with the one and one bonus. So this, in the old days, would have been a one and one But it's two shots early in the game, much earlier than it ever used to be. And Matt Ducharme will counter by going bigger in the front court. Carrero comes out, Empey and Eximon both come in. McMahon goes to the bench for UMD. So the Corsair is trying to gain an advantage in the post while McBorrow's out of the game, but McBorrow's going to quickly come back in as Jenna Cosgrove quickly dispatches her to the scorer's table. That's an important second free throw there because it keeps McBorrow off the court with a miss. Thompson making that one would have helped the anchor women on a couple of levels there. Corsairs do have an advantage inside now. Here's Empey 
She goes up, can't get it to go. Rebound taken away by Thompson. Outworked Empey for that rebound. Thompson into the front court, races forward. Eximon draws another charge. That was just too easy. You can see Nakira set herself up well in advance. She's gotten very adept at taking these charges. You have to know they're coming if you're watching your film. That's about as basic as they get. Now, fortunately for Rhode Island College, it's an offensive foul, so it doesn't result in free throws for UMass Dartmouth, but the Corsairs are also in the bonus for the remaining 328. Brown got fouled and will go to the line, and that's a problem for Gurrier because she picks up an early third. Don't be surprised if one of the key Rhode Island College players fouls out of this game early and that that ends up swinging this game because you've got Gurrier with three, Livermento with three, and McBorough all with three. And they are heavily dependent on all three of those players. Brown's first is good. Dozen tonight for Ashley, the New Bedford native who played her high school ball down the road at Fairhaven High. Makes there as well a team best 13 points for Ashley Brown. Gobbin bounds to the left side. Brooke Young pivots, throws a high errant pass to the land in the backcourt. Not giving up on it was Korzak. She plucked it, races in, misses the shot, and Eximon lost the ball out of bounds but got it off an opponent. Corsairs will keep it with 3.01 left in the quarter. And most of a new shot clock, 29 seconds remaining on it here. Corsairs up by three. So Ashley Brown gets her teammates going. Donovan's left alone. Bang! Big mistake there by Jordan Govan. Leaving Megan Donovan wide open. She hits, makes her first basket of the night. And the Corsair lead stands at six now, 46-40, with 2.45 to play in the third. Livermento takes Empey off the dribble and spun. Travels. Anchor women coming unglued here with 2.40 left to play in the third quarter. Big opportunity for the Corsairs now off back-to-back -back mistakes by Rhode Island College. Can't give Donovan that kind of room. That's her shot. Megan Donovan, the sophomore out of Abington, Mass, and Archbishop Williams. Has the Corsairs in front by a half dozen here at 46-40 with 2.35 to play third quarter. Empey up top, gives it to the right side for Donovan. Korzak up top to the dribble drive. Behind her back now crosses it over. Gets free. Can't get it to drop. Would have put the Corsairs up eight, which would have been their largest lead of the half. In the back door comes Korzak for the steal. Donovan forcing the issue. Lays it up. Can't get that one to fall either. Corsairs with two great looks and an eight-point lead. Didn't get one either time. Mark that down with two minutes to go in the third quarter. Corsairs nearly went up eight. Liv Romento trying to make it hurt on the other end. Blocked by Empey. Taken away by Eximon, who safely gets it out to Ashley Brown. With 1.48 and counting left to play third quarter. Corsairs trying to take command of this game headed to the fourth. Brown stops and throws it right to Liv Romento. Liv has got the half step. Brown doesn't want to give her the easy basket and does it one worse. A travel. Oh, they call a travel. No basket. No foul. No nothing. That is a tough, tough call. Livermento looked like she was going to get easy points there. That is a tough travel to call in the situation. Big break for UMass Dartman. Some serious home cooking there. Empey spins and she travels. So it goes eye for an eye or walk for a walk, I guess. 120 remaining, third quarter. UMD still in front by six, but that margin of six has been a stubborn ceiling in this game tonight. Corsair has been unable to widen the second half lead past six despite several opportunities to do so. Govan finds Livermento for the long two, no good off the front rim. Gurrier with the offensive rebound against two much taller players. Gives it up and it falls out. Free throws coming for Wilshire McBurrow, who gets herself to the line. UMass Dartmouth ball, call it number four, Megan Donovan, her 
Donovan, of course, has the fouls to give, so she does give that one there. Now, McMorrow, not much of a free throw shooter, just 44% on the year. Misses with the first one, so you like that defense there from Donovan. Moretti and McMahon into the game for UMD. Empey and Korzak go to the bench. Korzak looking to sneak in a little extra rest. And we'll see if Moretti can give the Corsairs a boost here in the final 61. McBorrow misses the second, and how about Eximon getting in there for a huge rebound. Corsairs can take this two for one if they play their cards right. Brown over to the right side for McMahon. McMahon gets a screen left wide open for three. No good. Excuse me, that was Donovan. They call a foul on UMD there. I mean, that was a pretty textbook jump ball. And they'll call a foul on Ashley Brown, which will be her third. And remember, the anchor women are in the bonus. So the Corsairs had chance after chance to take a seven-plus point lead in this third quarter. They didn't do it. And now the anchor women have a chance to nibble it down to four if Gurrier can make a couple of free throws here. First one falls out on her. Three straight missed free throws by Rhode Island College. And that accounts for half their current deficit, which stands at six with 44.2 seconds remaining. Gurrier hits her second. Game high 15 points on the game for Gurrier. And it's 46-41. Corsairs will get one more look at it here in the third. Brown picks up her dribble, gives off for Donovan. Donovan backs it up, has a screen, goes around it, passes across the lane for Eximon, and she's fouled on the way up. That hurts. Number four on McBorough, which cost them on a couple of levels. It's going to really hurt McBorrow's defense, and it might restrict her availability, too. Not a lot there. Looked like the ball went into her forearm. Anchor women certainly aren't pleased with that call. Eximond at the line makes the first of two. Eight points on the ball game for Nakira Eximond, the senior out of Greater New Bedford, Volk Tech. Jamie Williams was headed to the table. Matt Duchamp grabbed her to keep her back. Now they do put her in. She goes in for Donovan. Carrera will come in to play defense if Eximon can make this free throw. With 21.9 seconds to go. Her second is good, so she will get that extra break around the third quarter. Carrero and Empey come back in. McMahon and Eximon go to the bench. Key possession here for Rhode Island College, 21.9 seconds left to go. This is basically like an, a bonus fourth quarter possession right now. Shot clock's turned off. You're down by seven. You've got a chance to cut it to five or four. If you do that, you've got a pretty great chance to come back and win this game. If you don't, you still have a good chance, but it just won't be the same. A, a real opportunity presents itself here at Rhode Island College to try to make the hill easier to climb. There's a great look at it for Young. Misses the three. A chance on the follow. No good. Rebound collected by the Corsairs. They won't have time to shoot, but that's A-OK -okay by Matt Duchamp. Corsairs win the quarter as they led by two coming in, and they win this one by five to widen the lead out to seven. Corsairs in that quarter come up with 15 points, but more importantly, they hold Rhode Island College to their lowest out point output of the night, just 10. And at the end of three, UMD widens the lead back out to that all-important third possession at 48-41. to 41. We'll take a quick break and come right back. You're watching the 2019 Little East Conference semifinals on Little East TV. Welcome back. Corsairs in front by seven with the ball at the beginning of the fourth quarter. 
UMD trying to close out a Little East Conference semifinal victory for the third time in program history. UMD also looking for its first championship in school history. Nakira Examon's jumper misses short, and the rebound collected by Gurrier. Gurrier brings it forward, and now backs it up with 9.40 and counting to go in regulation. Govan off the dribble, throws it up, no good. Brown pulls down the rebound. Brown into the front court, backs it up. From the free throw line, can't get it to go. Examon outworks everybody for the rebound. Clocks the Corsair's best friend, they'll use some here. Examon goes in, shoots and scores. Big make there by Nakira at long last. She's into double digits with 11. And UMD has its largest lead of the second half, its second largest lead of the game at 9, 50 to 41 with nine minutes to go. Govan inside out for Young, looking to get three of it back. No good. Exit on the rebound. Rhode Island College tonight from downtown. One for 13 from three-point land, and that's why they're not winning this game. McMahon the other way. Bang! A rainmaker from Kayla McMahon, and the Corsairs have their largest lead of the night just like that, up by 12, 53 to 41. Gonzalez pokes it away from Gurrier. And Rhode Island College has got to be wondering what hit him. They were threatening to take this game over several times in the third quarter. But a couple bad possessions can add up real quick when you're playing an opponent that can hit the three like Kayla McMahon just did. And it's UMass Dartmouth's game to lose now. Up by 12 with 8.20 to go. Foul away from the ball. I'm going to get an offensive foul on Ornella Livermento. That's her four. Livermento with four. McBorough with four. Gurrier with three. Anchor women down by 12 in serious danger with 8.19 remaining. Corsairs have a chance to put their foot on the gas and build the path to Saturday right here and now with 8.12 to go. Korzak around to Gonzalez. Bounce entry for Eximon. Fouled. Or was she? No, three-second violation called first. And the ball will go back in the other direction. So that's a huge stop that the anchor women absolutely had to have with 8.07 remaining. And the anchor women will now need points in bundles, and they'll need them right away. Bad pass. That's not how to do it. Gurrier miscommunicated with Govan. Ball ended up on the Corsair bench. So Gallagher will come back in now. Govan heads to the bench with 8.06 to go. Gonzalez looking for somewhere to go with the inbound. Fits it into McMahon. Caleb blocked inside. Effort play there by Thompson. Thompson races into the open court. Ahead to Young. Young steps up, shoots. No good off the front rim. McBorrow the rebound. Can't hit the follow. Gonzalez comes out of the pack with the rebound. Reach in. Foul there is number four on Gurrier. Gurrier with four. Livramento with four. McBorrow with four. And the dam is about to burst on Rhode Island College here in the semifinal. 7.51 to go. They're still in it, but barely. And I mean barely. Gonzalez to the dribble drive, finds Eximon. Eximon shoots and scores. UMD by 14. And Rhode Island College will call the timeout. They needed to take about four possessions ago. 7.34 left to play. Your score, Corsairs 55. Anchor women 41. Here's another look at Nakira Eximon doing work inside for UMass Dartmouth. We've got a media timeout here at the Trip Athletic Center. We'll take it and come back. Your score, UMD 55, Rhode Island College 41. We'll be right back on Little East TV and DC TV. I'm a Division III student athlete, and I know how powerful words can be. The term gay doesn't mean stupid, lame, 
or less than. So I pledge to speak up if I hear the term gay used in a derogatory way or any other homophobic terms. If you can play, you can play in Division Three. I'm a Division Three student athlete and my teammates unconditionally accepted me as part of their family. So now I pledge to do the same for others. If you can play, you can play in Division Three. 7.34 to go in regulation. UMass Dartmouth has pushed this game to the brink. They've got their largest lead of the game at 55-41. Also, Rhode Island College has its three premier players in serious foul trouble. Sophia Gurrier, Ornella Livramento, and Wilsha McBurrow, all with four fouls apiece with the season on the line. Winner of this game advances to tomorrow's Little East Conference Final against the winner of our nightcap between Eastern Connecticut and Southern Maine. And that'll come your way next on Little East TV. Livermento back in the game for Rhode Island College. Young inbounds to Livermento. McMahon jumps out on her. Seven and a half minutes remain. Corsairs led by only two at halftime. Lead it by 14 now. Livermento gets in, can't get it to drop. The offense has gone ice cold for Rhode Island College as they've scored only 10 points in the second half. In almost 13 minutes of action now. Hang on to the ball. It's really been the one thing that's been to Rhode Island's benefit tonight. So Corsairs just can't secure the ball along the baseline. Gonzalez knocks the entry pass out of bounds. Young looking to trigger the inbound. It's tipped and taken away by Brown. Corsairs taking this game over. Two on two up the floor. Gonzalez off to McMahon looking for the dagger. Good night! 7.07 to go, Corsairs by 17. UMD looking for the big ones, and they're getting them. McMahon, then Gonzalez. This all starts with the defensive effort by Ashley Brown, remember, from right in front of the inbound, takes it away. Did a great job bringing it into the front court. They find a trailer there. Kayla McMahon with her second Huge three-pointer of this second half. And lead for the Corsairs now stands at 17. Now, kind of a somber Paul coming over this one as we've got a foul, not only a foul, but an injury on the floor over on the Rhode Island College side of things. And so we will step aside here for a moment while we get ready to bring you back to game play as the training staff out on the floor right now. So we'll step aside and come right back on Little East TV and DC TV. It's on us, it's on all of us, and it's time to act now. It's on us to start the change. It's on us to be the change. It's on us, it's on Division Three. It's on all of us to stop sexual assault. An ovation there for Taylor Thompson as she comes off with an apparent injury that's likely going to end her night. Thompson gave a good effort and she's frustrated as she comes off the floor as you can see. Now this one all over but the shouting anyway at this stage but nevertheless frustrating for Thompson to have her night and likely her season end in this fashion with 6.55 to go. Free throws coming here for UMass Dartmouth. There was a foul committed by Danielle Gonzalez, her third, before all of that. And so that's resulting in these free throws here. And Alicia Fernandez scoring her second point of the ball game with that make, trying to make it three. And does. Anchor women now showing a press, and they're going to foul. Gurrier out of the game on what appeared to be a good steal with 6.53 left to go. So Gurrier, who was Rhode Island College's best player tonight, gone with 6.53 to go. 
that on the heels of losing Thompson to injury. And this was the foreshadowing's been there all night. You had to figure someone was going to foul out early. For Rhode Island College, they had too many fouls to good players too early. Eximon now backs in. They'll call an offensive foul against Nakira. So that's her fourth. Good job taking the charge inside. And the Corsairs give the ball away with 6.43 to go. And it's a 15-point game. Shea Carrero back to the table, looking to come back on for UMD. As Matt Ducharme will utilize the big lead to conserve Makira here in this fourth quarter. A closer game should probably stay in. Tipped, taken away by Gonzalez. Corsairs come up with another turnover, but then they give it back. Ball loose on the floor. Livermento comes away with it. So Anchorwoman ball again with 6.15 to play, but the clock continues to wind, and UMass Dartmouth loves that, no matter who has the ball. Govan looking at a three. They need it. No good off the back rim. Brown with an easy rebound. Corsairs will bring it under six minutes remaining with a 15-point lead. Bounce entry punched away from Eximon, but Korzak gets it, finds the baseline. Can't get it to drop. Eximon gets the rebound, puts it back off the window. 15-point night for Nakira. 17-point lead for the Corsairs with 5.13 to go. Step back, three-pointer by Young is up and good. Good make there by Brooke Young. That lets Rhode Island College gets into its press. But the Corsairs are able to beat that into the front court. Corsak's got some room. She'll back it up with 5.25 to go. McMahon up top for Gonzalez, who returns. McMahon bounce entry inside for Eximon. Can't get it to go. Gets her miss. Puts up the follow. Score it and one. And that looks like the end of the night for Ornella Livermento. They'll call the foul not on Livermento, but on Young instead. And that's a break for Rhode Island College, but <laughs> Young's not even playing basketball at the time of the call. Okay. Well, the anchor women need the break at this stage not to lose another player there. So Eximont misses the free throw. And Young, who is just guilty of that foul somehow, gets the ball. Anchor women calling a timeout, and they get it off just in time before the trap with 5.06 to go in the quarter and 22 seconds remaining on the shot clock. So give you a look at how we got here and where we're going as you take a peek into that UMass Dartmouth timeout. Alex Berman and Matt Ducharme going over some, unhappy with something at the table. We'll keep you posted on that if anything changes, though. Rhode Island College called the 30-second timeout, or so UMass Dartmouth's bench is saying, and they're treating it like it's a full. So some confusion at the table about that at the moment. It's Matt Ducharme trying to say what gives, which is it? And they're going to treat that as a full timeout. So that's apparently settled. And you can see the first round upset Rhode Island College went on the road and beat defending champion UMass Boston to prevent what would have been a rematch of last year's championship game here tonight. And then Southern Maine got by Castleton in the 3-6 game to get us where we are here. So the winner tonight will face the winner of that next game between Southern Maine and Eastern Connecticut at 3 o'clock here tomorrow for the Little East Conference Championship game. And the Corsairs are most of the way there with 5.06 left to go. Impressively, they've held Rhode Island College to just 15 second-half points in almost 15 full minutes of play. So Brooke Young will look to inbound here. Young gets the ball in to the block for McBorrow. McBorrow spins, finds an open Fernandez, who scores quick. Two points for Annalisa Fernandez. So that'll get them back into the press. Corsairs beat it up ahead to Carrero. Carrero finds Korzek. Korzek with some room to roam, goes around McBorrow, shoots, hits the side of the backboard, gets her own miss, throws it back. Brown just barely stays in the front court and saves it forward to Gonzalez. Great play there by Ashley Brown. 
Carrero out to the wing for Korzek. Eight on the shot clock. Brown puts to the floor, drops back, advances. Carrero's got to shoot this, can't get it to go. McBorrow the rebound. Corsairs take some precious time off the clock, but they do not score. It's a 14-point game, and Matt Ducharme is going to get Nakira Eximon back out there, making sure he doesn't leave anything to chance with 4.15 to go. Gallagher steps to the right, bounces it to Fernandez, over to McBorrow. Anchor women doing UMass Dartmouth's job for them by taking all this time. Young finally puts up a three and knocks it down. Ten-point night for Brooke Young. She's been good from downtown. It's an 11-point game, but with under four minutes to go now. Gonzalez coast to coast for the finish. Can make all the threes you want, but if you're not going to play any transition defense, it's not going to matter. 3.38 to go. Valuable time wasted. Young enters to McBorrow. McBorrow shoots, can't get it to go. Gonzalez gets the rebound. And we are just about done here at the Trip Athletic Center tonight. 3.20 and counting to play. Gonzalez gets some room, leaves it for McMahon. McMahon bounce entry for Carrero, knocked away from her and stays inbounds. Bounce through. Gonzalez just barely able to reach out and grab it. Corsairs. Not aesthetically pleasing, but they're using the clock they need to use. Gonzalez, right hand, teardrop, no good. Carrero, the rebound. Can't get that one to sit up over the rim. Govin breaks through the pack with the ball. She's got a full head of steam. Stolen away by Brown. Kept alive, though. Anchor women get it forward. Gallagher ahead to Govin. And time just keeps on winding. 2.45 to go. Young spots up another three and hits. Brooke Young single-handedly keeping Rhode Island College hanging on by a thread here. 2.37 to go. It's now just a 10-point game. And a timeout called by Matt Ducharme to get his substitutes in with 2.34 left in the contest. So Matt Ducharme wanted to get Nakira Eximon back on the floor to be the sheriff here at the end, but so much happened in the open court. and You had so much running clock happening in the game that the Corsairs were content to let the clock run no matter who had the ball and no matter who was scoring because with all the time elapsing Rhode Island College's chances of mounting a comeback just went down, 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 down but they got two big three pointers out of Brooke Young that have kept them in it would be a stretch but adjacent to in it down by 10 with 2.34 left to go Corsairs were ahead by 17 earlier in this quarter and you see Jenna Cosgrove just trying to scheme her way one possession at a time to get a little bit closer and a little bit closer to try to find a way back into this here late. Lob pass, that'll help. Donovan saves it in but was already out of bounds. Corsairs give away the possession. And the anchor women get a chance to cut it to 8 or 7 with 2.27 left to go in the contest. And they'll use a timeout here, won't they? They will, with 2.27 to play. Down by 10, 64-54. Stranger things have, of course, happened. This is a 30-second timeout, we're told. Anchor women have one timeout left. They don't have any fouls to give. So they have the ability to extend this game some. Here's the thing about leading by 10 at this stage in the game. All you have to do is protect the ball and make free throws, which a lot of times can be easier said than done. We just saw the Corsairs come out of a timeout and give the ball away in under four seconds. But as long as you're making good inbound passes, getting the ball in the hands of good free throw shooters, i.e. Ashley Brown, you should be on easy street here in the remaining 222. But Brooke Young remains on the floor, and we'll see if she gets a heat check here for the anchor women. She wants one, but gives up the ball to the right side for Abby Phelan. Phelan, there's a whistle before that shot. We'll see what the call was. And it's going to be against UMass Dartmouth. They had it to give, but they're going to say it's in the act of shooting. Foul is on Ashley Brown. It's her fourth. Third on the Corsairs. And so Abby Phelan now will go to the free throw line. Phelan has not had a lot of attempts there this year. But she is a good free throw shooter in that limited sample. She's 10, excuse me, 9 for 10. She's also made 10 three-pointers this year, which is why she's out on the floor right now. 
And now Matt Ducharme's trying to say, again, what gives? If that foul was on the floor, it's only my third foul. Why are we at the free throw line? Kenny Barber always in control in situations like this. And they'll come out and they'll say two free throws. So Phelan looking to make it a single-digit game with 2.09 left. That's still a lot of time. First one is good. Phelan, a freshman out of Norton Mass and Norton High. There's a lot of overlap between these two schools' recruiting territories. Norton being a little closer to there than here. Phelan hits both. Big contribution from the rookie. No press by Rhode Island College. Are you kidding? You're down by eight with two minutes left in your season. So the Corsairs easily get it into the front court. Nakira misses the shot, gets her hands on the miss out of bounds. They'll keep it with UMass Dartman. Not sure that would stand up to replay scrutiny, but we don't have official replay in this game. So that ball belongs to UMD with a fresh shot clock and 1.56 to go. Corsairs need to get it in safely, and they do. Brown will step back for three. No. And the Corsairs give it right back. UMD's most precious resource is the shot clock at this stage in the game. You don't need points to win this game. You've just got to expire the clock. And Fernandes comes back and hits the three the other way. Things getting hot under the collar for Matt Ducharme in what's suddenly a five-point game with a minute 30 left. And amazingly, the anchor women don't have to foul if they don't want to at this stage with 1.24 to go. Donovan backs it up and gives it up top for McMahon. McMahon bounces over to Gonzalez. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Pass across the lane. Nakira can't get it to go, but gets her hands on the miss. Goes up, gets fouled, and will get to the line with 1-11 remaining in regulation. We're now at college foul for the number 12, Annalisa Fernandez, her third team woman. Fouls on Fernandez, it's her third. Remember, Gurrier already fouled out of the game with 6.33 left. McBurrow's got four. Gurrier's got four. Examond makes her first. And she now has a game-high 18. McBurrow comes back in for Rhode Island College. So does Livermento. Remember, they both got four fouls. Anchor women making some threes here late. That's what they were lacking for the first three quarters tonight. They were one for their first 13. So the Corsairs miss a free throw, and that leaves the back door open here still with 105 left to go. And Jenna Cosgrove uses her final timeout with 104 left to go in the game. So again, the refrain is the same. You get the ball in safely, you pass it to good free throw shooters, you protect the ball, you're fine if you're UMass Dartmouth, but they've not done a good job of taking enough of this clock away here late, so much so that if Rhode Island College could come out of here and hit a three-pointer in timely fashion, they could just play straight defense, get a stop, come down, take another three, and score to tie the game. So really poor clock management by UMass Dartmouth here in these last couple of minutes because this is an opportunity that never should have presented itself to Rhode Island College. Now, don't get me wrong, everything, and I mean everything, has to go right for Rhode Island College here. It probably has to be exactly what I just told you, three-pointer followed by defensive stand followed by three-pointer, and then all that would do is either force overtime or give you a chance to try to defend UMass Dartmouth in front of the buzzer to try to force overtime. All of that's a roundabout way of saying for all that's gone wrong here in the last few minutes for UMass Dartmouth, chances are one more point is going to win them this ball game. 66 is probably enough to get it done here with 64 seconds remaining. But the anchor women get the ball first. They have a bunch of three-pointers falling for them in this fourth quarter. Could they find their way around another to make it really interesting? Again, remember, no timeouts remaining for the anchor women. Ball's back in play. Gallagher puts it to the floor. Govan with the ball. Anchor women need a three. They look to Young. She's been supplying them and hits the side of the backboard of that one, and everybody can take a deep breath around here. Nakira Eximon gets fouled, and she'll get two chances to make one free throw to ice the game. Exhale. Ball, 
Now this shot was nowhere close, but the fact that you let Brooke Young get this open a look at it under these circumstances really is astounding. But just, you can see, just way, way off line. So Eximond at the line, really two shots to make one to win this thing, and she's got the first one. 19 now on the ball game for Nakira. And she will finish as the game's leading scorer in all likelihood. Now Livermento and McBorough come off. As the anchor women will just try to shoot threes to extend it the rest of the way with 49.5 to go. Eximond hits her second. She's got a 20-point game. McMahon comes back in. And the anchor women will inbound 49 and a half seconds to go. Inbound the ball for Young, and that clock starts to wind. No timeouts remaining for Rhode Island College, so they've got to get something up here quick. Govan wants a look at it, lets it go, and hits! Corsair is very fortunate that wasn't a four-point play. As we've got a whistle, Matt Ducharme wants a 30-second timeout. Keep an eye on Kayla McMahon in this replay. She probably should have gotten called for a foul here. She just ran through the shooter on the follow-through. And had that happened, it would have been a four-point play. Govan could have made a free throw to make it a four-point game. Corsair is very fortunate that wasn't called. And so Rhode Island College, a day late and a dollar short with these three-pointers, but they're certainly making it a more interesting fourth quarter with them. So 35.9 seconds is a lot of time when you get into this situation where it's single elimination, you're playing for your season. Obviously, you're going to foul and foul some more to extend the game, try to extend your season. I told you 66 was going to be enough to win this game. Chances are that's still true, but that number now for the Corsairs is 69 that they're trying to get to to try to guarantee right, that Rhode Island College could not tie the game with two three-pointers. That's the whole name of the game when you get to this stage of the game with 35.9 seconds left to go. Megan Donovan will inbound, gets it into Ashley Brown. It's exactly who they wanted getting it. Rhode Island College gives the foul immediately. Gallagher, who's got fouls coming out the ears, gives it right there. And it puts Ashley Brown at the line. Now, for you, Mass Dartmouth, you love that because you think she can get the job done. Brown, an 83% free throw shooter on the year. Makes the first one there with some help from the rim. 14 points on the night for Ashley. She does hit both. Ashley Brown getting the job done when it counts. Corsairs by seven. Anchor women now going to try to extend it a little longer with another three. Livermento needs to toss this one up. She does. Good looking shot, and she's got it. 13 now for Livermento. And we had a whistle right after. And we'll see where there's some games with the clock. They might adjust and put some more clock on here for Rhode Island College as sometimes that home clock operator can be a little late with the trigger finger in situations like this. Amazingly, just a four-point game right now with 25 seconds left, we think. Rhode Island College making three after three after three to hang around in this game. Our good friends at Dartmouth Community Television have the technology, so we'll keep an eye on when this ball goes through the basket. Doesn't look like a lot of time would go back on. The ball goes through with 25 and a half left to go. And Rhode Island College will really make out here. They put 25.9 on the clock, so they get more clock than I would have given them, but it's been said before that I'm biased. 69-65 the score in favor of UMass Dartmouth. And amazingly, the Corsairs aren't home free. They took a 17-point lead early in this fourth quarter and appeared to be well on their way to a comfortable blowout, empty the bench out for the last two minutes type of a win. But then somebody woke up the Rhode Island College offense, which had only scored 15 points in the first 15 minutes of the second half. And since then, they've found their three-point shooting game. And they've been raining it down. Rhode Island College entered the half with 31 points. So 15 points in 15 minutes. Let's do a little quick arithmetic. Gives you 15 points in 15 minutes, right? Gets you to 46. 
Now they're at 65. Right, so that's 19 points in the last four and a half minutes. I mean, that really is incredible. So they've scored more in the last four minutes than they'd scored in the entire second half to that point. And that's keeping them alive here with 25.9 seconds remaining. Now, again, shouldn't be an issue for UMass Dartmouth so long as you, A, protect the basketball on the inbound, and, B, get the ball in the hands of good free throw shooters, namely Ashley Brown. You want Ashley Brown receiving this inbound pass. With 25.9 seconds left. They do get it into Korzak, and they call the foul on Korzak just before it was headed out of bounds. Brown now Young's called for that foul. Now remember, Young took that foul, took one for the team quite literally to prevent Livermento from fouling out earlier. Seemed like a non-issue at the time, but Young is their biggest weapon now, needing three-pointers, and that's her fourth foul. So you've got Young, Livermento, and McBarrow all with four fouls apiece. Korzak makes her first free throw. As the Corsairs will try to push it to six. Now they can't get it to seven here. As Rhode Island College has made three after three to hang around, but the Corsairs are making their free throws. All right. Can the Anchor Women find another triple here with 23 seconds left to go? Livermento's going to try it. No good. Finally, one of them bounces out. Out of bounds. Last touch by Rhode Island College. Goes out of bounds off Gallagher. And so the scare should should, 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 should be over now with 16 and a half seconds remaining. Corsairs just needing, again, one more point to put the game to bed as they get the ball into Brown. Brown coughed it up, turned it over, no foul call. So not only will she not get to the free throw line, it's a turnover by the Corsairs, and the anchor women remain in it by the slimmest of margins with 15.3 seconds left to go. Ball lobbed out up top, catching three by Phelan. That's going to bounce out, tapped out. Young's got it. She knows she needs to take a three. Stops, gives it up. Seven seconds remaining. Govan needed to shoot five seconds ago. Let's it fly. Misses short. Brown comes away with the ball, and the Corsairs needed every one of those 66 points that I told you about to grab this victory here tonight as they are able to secure their third ever trip to the Little East Conference Final by virtue of a 71 to 65 victory over Rhode Island College as they complete the three game sweep of the anchor women here in the 2018-19 season. And they are on the cusp of their second ever trip to the NCAA tournament if they can grab a win and an automatic qualifier tomorrow against either Eastern Connecticut or the University of Southern Maine. Hats off to Rhode Island College for an outstanding fourth quarter effort. A lot of lesser teams would have folded tent down by 17. Anchor women did some amazing work just to get back within four, but the math just doesn't work. When you're down by that many that late, you have to make that many shots. It just it never works out because you need each and everything to go right. Almost everything went right for the anchor women, but clearly not enough there. So I'll be headed over to the downstairs broadcast position to hear from Coach Ducharme and a player of his choosing in just a moment. Do stick with us here on CourseSearAthletics.com and Little East TV as UMD wins it and they advance 71-65 to over Rhode Island College. One, two, one, two.
Welcome back to Little East TV's coverage of the Little East Conference Tournament Championship. And this first semifinal goes to UMass Dartmouth, 71-65 over Rhode Island College. And I'm joined now by Kayla McMahon, who is one of the bigger reasons why. Kayla, two big three-pointers to start that fourth quarter that really gave you guys control of the game. I don't know if you realized quite at the time how much you were going to need those, but very important in the game. And certainly at that situation in the game, you had a chance to take command. What was it about those opportunities that made you know you were going to get the chance to, to really put your team ahead for good tonight? Well, like you said, we really needed those shots. Um, I knew it was like pretty crucial, and my teammates did a great job of getting me open. Um, I think something that really worked well for us is that we like would set our screen, and then I'd pop out and just look for the open shot. I was kind of shying off a little bit in the first half, but coach told me to just, you know, every open chance you get, you just got to shoot it. So I tried to have a lot of confidence in myself and shoot the ball. <laughs> And then Coach Wild finished to this one tonight. Rick was one for their first 13 from downtown, and they ended up going six for 12 in the fourth quarter alone. So as they figured things out from the perimeter, how were you managing what was going on on the bench there just to make sure that the lead stayed intact no matter what? I don't know if I have hair in my hand still from pulling it out. <laughs> um, you know, they hit, some big, they hit some big shots. Good situational basketball on their end, you know. Yeah. Um, they made it a basketball game again after we, I thought we pulled off, and I was like, okay, we're good. And then they went and did some things that I didn't um, – I was hoping they wouldn't. <laughs> um, like you said, they were one for the first 13, so I was like, okay, they're a little cold right now. They sh but then people, they just hit a lot of threes. Um, so we had to do a better job of, of running them off the three-point line at the end of the game. Um, but we can work, that's stuff we can work on, and thankfully we live to see another day to, to make it happen. But I can't say enough about the defensive effort um, by our players, uh, the clutch shooting from our players, um, the leadership of our, of our seniors and captains and juniors even. Um, it was just a, a great team victory. And then, Kayla, you were certainly challenged in the first half as you were ahead by 10 early. They came back, swung it around, and they got up by six there for a little while. So when you did get behind six, what were you and your teammates saying to one another to make sure you were able to right the ship before halftime? Um, we were just trying to stay composed. Um, we had to, when we went in for halftime, we really had to applaud our defense because we were doing well on defense. But we just had to, you know, stay confident and keep shooting our shots. And it, it went, ended up working out in the end, but we just all had to stay composed and lift each other up when we're down, and I think that's good. <laughs> and defense was key in this one, Coach. You held them to 10 points in the third quarter, which was a big win for you guys. What were the adjustments that you made at halftime in order to get that better defensive performance in the third quarter? Honestly, it started a lot with rebounding better. Um, giving them less second-chance opportunities made our defense look better. Because you, you, know, you work for 15 to 20 to 25 seconds on the clock, you give up a shot, you know, a contested shot, but then when they get the second chance opportunity, that's what kills the morale and everything. So we started doing a better job of rebounding. That made our defense look better, and that made our transition start uh, a little bit better too. So I think that third quarter was a big coming out of the um, halftime, and it wasn't honestly, it's not about a lot of halftime adjustments today. It was about just uh, buckling down on what we wanted to do from the beginning that we talked about at the beginning of the game about rebounding, uh, pressure, um, and then getting out and getting in our pace. So I thought we did a nice job of that in the third quarter. Like you said, we pulled away, and I thought we, they did a nice job coming back. Scared me a little bit, but like I said, we had some clutch shooting, and we had some clutch plays. And then, Kayla, it really all comes down to this now. 22-4 and four on the year. You were there you know, a year ago when that championship didn't go your way with UMass Boston. It's been your goal all year long to not just get back, but to have that game be at home. You'll get another excellent opponent tomorrow, no matter who it is, Eastern Connecticut or Southern Maine. Uh, what are the things that you're going to be thinking about tonight into tomorrow to make sure that you and your teammates get a different result this time around? Um, we're just going to stay focused. Like you said, both um, teams that are playing right now are really big matchups. Um, I don't know, we got to get a good night's sleep, we're going to watch their game, and we're just going to keep looking forward and stay confident. And of course, Coach, this time of year it never gets any easier with your next game, and that's going to start being true tomorrow in a big way. You'll get either Eastern Connecticut or Southern Maine. You're not going to tell me who you'd rather face, so I won't bother you with that one. But when you look at having to try to raise your game to another level tomorrow to try to take that last step in the Little East, what are those things you can do to take that one more step forward to be cutting down nets tomorrow? <laughs> We got to just play solid team course here basketball like we've been doing all year. I think last year we we might have had some moments like uh, we just didn't capitalize on some moments. And this year I feel this team has really learned from that experience last year. There's a lot of people back that were there for that. Um, and I think they're ready. They're so focused. Um, and, you know, they put up with a screaming guy on the sideline and like, they pick each other up. And this team is, uh, like I said, they got some grit and some focus that is a little different than what, what we were before because of the experience we had. So. I mean, we're, either one of those teams has both been perennial powerhouses in the Little East, um, so it's going to be a great game no matter what. I'm looking forward to watching this one, actually, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
Oh, congratulations to both of you and best of luck trying to finish it tomorrow. Thank you. It's going to do it for us. UMass Dartmouth wins at 71 to 65 over Rhode Island College. They advance to championship Saturday and they'll play the winner of our next matchup between Eastern Connecticut and Southern Maine. That'll come your way next on Little East TV and DC TV. take on third-seeded Southern Maine.